Strengthened by Grace Radio Live is a weekly radio show and podcast where we witness God's salvation, purpose, and call in the lives of those who receive God's gift of salvation. You'll be hearing from pastors, worship leaders, and all saints who will share the story of grace, how God called them from darkness to light. Today, we have with us Pastor Brad Bowen. Here is a sneak peek. When I, when I was getting the call, I was thinking, at this age? So you're never too old. No, you're not. But, that's right. But you do wonder. You know, that's what people need to know. Guys, girls and guys need to know. It doesn't matter. Uh-huh. But God's going to pre- prepare you. And when you're ready, in his eyes, he will use you to the ends of the earth. Amen. So, yeah. How would you encourage somebody who, who perhaps is saying, you know, I just don't know what my calling is. Right. Uh, I don't know if I'm called to be a pastor, to be a door greeter, to be to be what? You know, what is the, the calling? How would you encourage them in that? The first thing I'd say is just get into the Word of God first. That's mm-hmm. the first thing you do, and you make it a habit, either in the morning or in the evening or in the noon, whatever you can, get in the Word of God. And then go and volunteer at anything in church. If it is a door greeter, then that's what you do. If it's a parking lot attendant, that's what you do. Um, that's where I started out in California under Raul Reese. I started out as a parking lot attendant. And so it doesn't matter because God uses you and, he, and then he builds you to where it is. So you don't have to worry about what you want to do. You just wait to what God shows you what to do. And for me, that's what he did. And it took up to 55 years old before he called me into the ministry. Welcome back to Strengthened by Grace Radio Live. I'm so glad that you're joining us this evening as we continue to have these wonderful stories of grace, of how God has redeemed, how God has reached out to to the lost, to each of us, and how we have come to salvation today with me is Brad Bowen. Bowen, yes. Bowen. Yes. I almost got it right this time. Yes. I'm so glad you can join us today, and we're going to just talk with you and see how the Lord reached out to you and what he's doing right now so welcome to the program I'm so, I'm so glad you can join us so brad i'm always interested in seeing how the lord reached you you know yes you're a pastor from calvary chapel emporia kansas emporia kansas for yep. some reason i feel like i'm gonna say the word wrong <laughs> emporia uh-huh. kansas. kansas yes and and that's that's amazing right but that's not where the story begins the story begins with the story of grace and redemption and and, and i always love hearing that because we all can identify in some one way to another to somebody else mm-hmm. sometimes when we're going through our struggles we feel like you know what that's just me nobody goes through this nobody understands me mm-hmm. but in reality is that's a lie yep. i think we all struggle with the same things in or in, maybe not as everybody else but as somebody else for sure so why don't you tell me a little bit about when you come to the Lord, how the Lord reached you? Well, uh, we, let's start back a little bit farther than that. Let's do it. Um, um, my wife was 19. I was 21. Uh, we had a 28-month-old child, and my wife died of uh, spinal meningitis. So at that point in my life, uh, I'm a single dad all of a sudden, and I, it was just really hard. At the age of 20? 20. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. And... Um, uh, so anyway, from there, I, I just got, I got scared. Um, I was afraid of death. Wow. And so I, I figured if you're going to die young, party hardy. So I wasn't the type that went out and did the drugs and did anything. I was completely against it. But once this happened, it pulled me into it. So I end up into the drug, drug world for a while and um, uh, drinking a little bit. And, and so, you know, I don't like to embellish that because that was that bad side and everybody knows it and everybody who's gone through it knows what they're, or if they're in it, they know how bad it is. And so, but at that point in time, I, let's fast forward a little bit. In 1982, I um, uh, was working for a company. I'm an air conditioning heating guy. I was working for a company named One Way Heating and Air Conditioning, That's a and great it was a Chris, yeah, it was a Christian uh, company. I was far from being a Christian, and over a period of time, um, I kind of got myself in trouble with the company, and um, uh, the boss who owned it, Jeff uh, Williams, he went ahead and brought me into the office. I thought I was going to be fired, and uh, was coming in after lunch to do, to talk to him, and by six o'clock that evening, I'd given my life to the Lord. 
So, so you're expecting, you know, the, the gun is coming down. I messed up the royally, yep, yep. and and so you come into the office, and what is the first thing that your boss tells you? He goes, oh, "Let's talk about what's going on in your life," and that's how he started. Really? And he he knew me well, but he just talked about different things and 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 offered, and he did something that people like me and like you always say, "Why didn't somebody talk to me about this a little sooner? Right. Why didn't somebody just you know bring things in?" And so with that. That's when it took, I was in there almost five hours. Um, the neat thing about it is he was very involved in his church. Mm -hmm. And he was, uh, his secretary, I mean, the, his secretary there worked, uh, went to church with him. So the, I seen the pastor come through all the time. And I seen some of the other men from church coming through the shop all the time. So he was very tied into them. And uh, when I came out of the room at six o'clock, um, And I give my life to Christ. I was, I was kind of crying. When we opened the door, the secretary stayed, called the people, and the pastor and his wife and elders and people were in the lobby praying for me. Get inside. out. There was Now, a whole prayer ministry just, just happening in right, the other right room. Right there when I came out. Wow. And I just broke down completely. I, I oh, still, man, still break down when I, when I talk about it and think about it. And I walked right into an instant family. So I went right to church. You know, and, So this was in Emporia in Kansas? No, this was at? in um, uh, Covina, California area. The actual church, uh, the business and church was in Arcadia, California. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. back in Cali. Yep, back in California. Yeah. And uh, I came to the Lord then and, and um, really changed, changed my life, changed everything for my son and I. Uh, in, in 83, I was late 84, I mean 82, and in 83, my son and I went and was baptized together, so... How old was your son at this age? Uh, at this age, he was about seven or eight. So he was a little bit yeah, right. uh, older, right? Uh -huh. And so just to recap so far where we've been, um, so you and your wife get married at the age of 17 and 19 and 17 and 19? 19 and 17. 19, and, which is very young, by yeah, the way. Yeah, very much. And, and I'm nothing against them. My, my nope. wife and I got married when we were 21, and it's yeah. a lovely ride. I love yeah. it. The Lord yeah. is so good. And, and so she passes away at the age yes. of 21. So by then, your, your kid's a little uh, bit... She was 19. Oh, at the age of 19, uh, right after having the baby? Yeah, about two and a half. Well, he was 28 months old, so... Wow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What will you tell somebody who who's facing that right now? Because with COVID, we're, the, the, things that we, the, way, the way things are going, many people are losing their loved ones, and it's very unexpected. I mean, I imagine something like that was quite a shock. Oh, it was... Um, Yeah, it was a shock, all right. Not only that, it, it really threw me for a loop. I had, I mean, what I thought was life itself um, was no longer that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why I think that the five years later when I was into the drug scene and doing the stuff I was doing and then, and then I was explained about Jesus Christ by Jeff, the five years later, that's when I came out of that and the Lord just blessed everything and it opened up and it and it just answered everything that i was going through oh wow and it's and it is hard and i was at when that happened i became that, that dad that i didn't didn't bring the drugs to the house put it that way Good. Uh, i came home every day i made sure he got fed every day if i went out in the middle of the week he had a babysitter or he went to his grandparents so i mean i did that i didn't get so far into the drugs where I was into the meth and stuff like they are today. Mine was more of the pot and the, and the different things. I'm not trying to disclaim it. I'm not trying no, to. No. I'm owning that because it was bad. But I, I still had a, a, a heart for my son and make sure that he was being taken care of. No, that's a good heart to have. I love the fact that, that you have a, a, a believer that was a boss. Yeah. He wasn't a boss that was a believer, but a believer that was a boss, you know, who yeah. owned his company and who understood the power of the gospel. I think that's amazing. Uh, it was, how, it, how often does that happen? Yeah. And it was neat because with him, I go to work, and now we're praying in the morning. Oh, and wow. I never thought about doing that before. And then we're doing Bible studies. And, um, and it was just really a, a unique experience working with him and for him. And it changed a lot of things. And I stayed with him for quite a few years. He sold the company, and I went with the company when he sold it. So, okay. But, yeah. You know, it's... It's funny. I, I I used to be I used to manage movie theaters for many years, and and there's always this pressure from the world that tells you do not you cannot talk to people about Jesus. 
No. You yeah. cannot tell people about Jesus, but that is not true. Right. You know, even no. especially when it's your own company, you have the freedom to to share to, the gospel, and that that is such a blessing. So you started going to church. What church right. did you go to? Uh, at that time, it was called Arcadia Community Church. Uh-huh. Um, they have now, since when I understand, they renamed the church and they moved it a little ways. But they uh, that's the church I went to for quite a while. Um, they, I don't want to put anything bad, but they kind of started going. That's when God gave me discernment because I left that church because they started going uh, vineyard style. Okay. And there was a lot of the name it and acclaim it and the Holy Ghost and all the stuff going on that was Pushing it out, they were pushing the the tongues. I believe in tongues, I you know completely, but they're pushing it that you're not saved without it. So the church was going that way. God spoke to me right there in church, and then I left. And when I left, that's when I ended up at Calvary Chapel uh, Diamond Bar. At that time, it was West Covina with Raul Reese. And so that that's that's Raul's church. That's yeah. Raul's church. And then we moved as we moved to California. He moved over to Diamond Bar. Oh, okay. I yeah. have the transition right there. Right. I think it's amazing because because sometimes people will will go to church and you know and 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 I always it's so important to be a Berean to to follow the Holy Spirit right. to read the Word and to say you know what what they're telling me doesn't seem to be that right. That's what happened to me. It was real yeah. weird because remember, like I said, this was my family because yeah. they I was when I came out of that office and there they are praying for me. And now they're instant family, and I'm now I'm there two or three years with them, and then the Lord speaks to me, "Hey, I want you to leave." And it was like it took two or three times for me to go on a Sunday morning where I was getting that feeling, and I'm thinking, "This is my family; I can't leave them." But the Lord says, "No, are you following them, or are you following me?" And then that's when He brought me over to the Calvary Chapel side. So, you know, that's that's very. The way that's the way it should be. Yeah, that's the way it should be. You know, and and like you say, we don't mean to diss any church. We don't mean to say no. You're 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 a terrible person, right. <laughs> but but it's important to realize that there's in the in the body of Christ, there's many places where there's this unbalance. Yeah, you know where there's so much emphasis on everything but the word. Right. You know, and and sometimes we can have the opposite unbalance. Right. We can be have just the word, but let's not talk about right. the Holy Spirit. Right. Exactly. And, and I love that Pastor Chuck used to say, "We land in the middle." Yep. We live in the middle. We're not Pentecostals. We're not Baptists. We believe in God's word. We believe in the movement of the Holy Spirit. Right. And and, and it's and not it's forced. And it's not forced. No, uh, that's one thing that really pulled me with Calvary Chapel was nothing there was forced. They didn't, you know, uh, take you in. You didn't have to become a member of the church. Uh, that the other one I came from did, and they forced all this stuff on you, and it was more like legalism. Mm-hmm. And then when the Lord spoke to me. And I left, and when I went, end up at Calvary, it was like, wow, this is crazy. Uh, and I've just, it, and it took a while, but I didn't leave. I stayed with it. And um, my my wife, I'm remarried. Uh, we've been married 33 years now. Well, congratulations. Yeah, That's a lot. it's been great. <laughs> and uh, great. Um, uh, she was Calvary Chapel. So she was with uh, with the Calvary Chapel. You there met too. her at church. Mm-hmm. By the way, in case you're dating and you're like, I don't know where to find a wife, please understand. Just relax, love the Lord, yep. seek the Lord, yep. go to sleep, just like the Lord put Adam to sleep, and he will bring you the right person. And fi- I-, I tell my kids this, and maybe they think I'm crazy, but I tell them, you got to find somebody who loves Jesus more than you, honey. Yeah. You just somebody who loves them so completely. Yep. Because if they love him, they're going to love you. Yeah. Well, I'm, a, I'm still a fairly new Christian in the Calvary side, yeah. so I'm still learning. And when we met, she had gone two years to Calvary, uh, of uh, um, of the Calvary Chapel Bible College up oh. at Twin Peaks. So she's this very learned person of the Bible and knows it real well and knows the Holy Spirit. And here I come along, and I'm still learning, and I'm still trying to grab, and I'm still answering questions to myself because I've been in church, but I haven't been taught yeah. the Word of God. So mm-hmm. now I'm learning that. And what was neat about this is she sat back and let me learn and 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 let me grow and become the man of god over our family first and then we it just, and then god just took me from there to where uh he brought me brought us to kansas and then that then at that point is when um after 10 11 years here uh that god called me into the ministry as full-time pastor 
So before you came back to Kansas, you didn't you did not come as a pastor. No, 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 no. Oh, that's no. right. You went to yeah. I forget his name's church. I'm sorry. Um, Mark Fry. Mark Fry of Ark City, Kansas. And um, actually, I we came out first, and we went to a small little church at Calvary in Elk Falls. And then that pastor is Steve Bliss. He's still there. Okay. We went there, and it was so small that God was pulling us putting us in a ministry situation, but there was really no room for it because it was a very small ministry. So that's when we went ahead and went to Ark City. Now, we lived 30 miles between, there was 30 miles to Ark City, <laughs> it was 30 miles to um, uh, Elk Falls. So when we did, we just went the other direction. It was a much bigger church, it had more room, didn't know what I was gonna do or what I was supposed to do. We just started going and a year later, a year and a half later, he asked me to, to do a, uh, uh, Oh, college and career uh, uh, with a group of, of kids uh, for study. And then mm -hmm. they wanted me to do a senior citizens. Wow. So, yeah, so I was doing both, and then we merged them together, and that was just so amazing. So you have college people and senior citizens. And people. senior citizens. And what that's was neat was group. some <laughs> of these kids that was out of town needed grandparents, and that's what oh. – it was just – it was amazing how that worked. And like a season of everything, yeah. it went away, and then he put me over all the men's studies – uh, and I started doing that and then went up through and then I just kind of like his number two, not as a pastor, but his number two to travel with him. And, and we did all the stuff together and everything. And then just, just helping. Yeah. yeah. And then God just one day I, I heard him say that I want you to do full time. And I had no idea what that meant. So I just prayed about it. Didn't even talk to my wife for a good couple months. And I kept hearing it because my study nights was Sunday night. Get home. I'd study two or three hours mm -hmm. of the word of God for the Monday night men's study. And so I waited and, and I just kept waiting on the Lord. Finally, I went to my wife and I said, hey, uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but I'm, I'm being called to do something. And my wife says, me too. Really? Yeah. She goes, I'm getting the same thing about you. I said, so now what are we doing? She goes, we pray. So we prayed. And about a month later, we went and took it to Pastor Mark. And Pastor Mark says, well, we'll pray. Well, they went out to the Seniors Pastors Conference in California while they were there, they were all these pastors that you see out here and yeah. where we're out at this conference. Um, they were there, and they all knew me. And they um, they were talking that they wanted to put a church in, in Emporia. Really? So Mark says, well, Brad's being called. And so they said, great. <laughs> so they called me that morning from 530 in the morning out there when they were doing their walks around the campus. And they called me at 730 out here in, in the Midwest. And... Um, I started praying about it, and then we started a Bible study, and that was in 2006, and uh, we started as a church in 2007, and uh, we then we bought our own building in 2010. So wow, praise the Lord. We've been man. going ever since. And, and That's amazing. It's, it is. It's really to see how God's worked. I've not been anything. We came, if you will, with our hat in the hand and no money. And I worked. My wife worked. And we paid our own way. And we came up with a Bible study, and it rolled into a church, and it rolled into a point where we could buy a building. And that's it awesome. was just amazing what God did, and he takes care of everything that we need. But that's the thing. The most important part is showing up. Being there. Just showing up. You know, yeah. just saying, Lord, here I am. It is yeah. a, in Isaiah. Isaiah's calling. Here I am, Lord. Who, am I, who shall we right. send? Right. And the Lord, it says in the middle of hearing all this heavenly, right. I call it heavenly gossip, you know, it's yeah. heavenly, like he's listening, like what's going on in heaven? Yeah. And he says, here I am, right. send me. Here I am. It's, yeah. It's, 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 yeah. yeah. A lot of times people complicate things. They do. They do. Um, one thing too is, is, and I'm not saying anything about me, uh -huh. that I'm so great and I did this. But when you talk about being there, and I'm talking to people out there who maybe have had the calling or they're in a Bible study situation that you have to be there no matter what. Mm -hmm. And we were going as the men's study, had about 12 guys in there. And over while we were finishing out one of the books that we were going through, the, uh, everybody left. Huh. And we were going to, we, we advertised at the church that starting up the new, you know, the new book was, was going to be first Peter and we were excited and I show up. And I'm sitting there, and nobody walks in the door. Really? So I just, I, I waited for about 15 minutes, and I'd make coffee. So I poured me a cup of coffee, and I sat down, and I went through the study myself. In about an hour and a half, <laughs> I got up, turned off all the lights in the church, 
turned everything off, and I left. I came back the next Monday. I did the same thing. Nobody walked in the door. And the third week, Mark wrote, shows up because Mark would come in and check on me and Pastor Mark. Yeah. And he goes, well, how are things going? And I go, he goes, where is everybody? I go, nobody's been here. And he goes, okay, so are you going to? I go, no. God called me here. I'm going to stay here. So I went. We did. We, we talked. We didn't really study. We talked. Went out and had some ice cream. I went home. I come back the next week. Same thing. Sat down. I hear the door open. Somebody's here. The guy comes running in, and he was a, a, goes to the church. He's a doctor. Um, and he comes in, and he sits down, and he says, man, I'm so sorry. I've been working three weeks to get my time so I can have Monday nights to come to study. Where are we at? And I said, First Peter chapter 1, verse 1. <laughs> and we started. When I left there, I was there 10 years doing the men's study. When I left to come up to Emporium, we had 25 men in the, in the Bible study. Oh, priest and learn. So it's, you've got to be there. You're committed no matter what. You're committed to God and what God's going to do. You don't have the timing. You don't know who he's going to call. You just be there. Yeah, that's, that's the way it needs to be. Yeah. Yep. And God that's, uses us. That is, that is amazing, man. Yeah. It's been really good. And then, and then the, the, we made it up to Emporia, and, and uh, God's been blessing there. And it's just really amazing to see. I, I get I sit back and I watch people grow in the Lord by because they're coming now. And they and they're there and they want to learn. And I see them and their lives changed and now they're they're changing their children's wow. lives. And it's just wonderful to see because it's not me, it's the Holy Spirit. And if you trust in God and you and you go after God and you start reading your word of God and you start bringing it in. God can do anything with you. He may call you overseas. He may call you in your backyard. That's he right. may start a church. I didn't think at 55 years old that I was going to start a church. You were 55. Yeah. Wait, so we jumped from 20s, 20s. to 50s by the time you started beca- when you yeah. became a pastor. Yeah. Yep. I, I didn't realize that. Yeah. It just dawned yeah. on me that you're telling me there's a 30-year yeah. process and molding right. uh-huh. and shaping. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and like what I said, when I, when I was getting the call, I was thinking, at this age? So you're never too old. No, you're not. But, that's right. But you do wonder. You know, and that's what people need to know. Guys, girls and guys need to know. It doesn't matter. Uh-huh. But God's going to pr- prepare you. And when you're ready, in his eyes, he will use you to the ends of the earth. Amen. So, yeah. How would you encourage somebody who, who perhaps is saying, you know, I just... Don't know what my calling is. Right. Uh, I don't know if I'm called to be a pastor, to be a door greeter, to be to be what? You know, what is the, the calling? How would you encourage them in that? The first thing I'd say is just get into the Word of God first. That's mm-hmm. the first thing you do. And you make it a habit, either in the morning or in the evening or in the noon, whatever you can, get in the Word of God. And then go and volunteer at anything in church. If it is a door greeter, then that's what you do. If it's a parking lot attendant, that's what you do. Um, that's where I started out in California under Raul Reese. I started out as a parking lot attendant. And so it doesn't matter because God uses you and he, and then he builds you to where it is. So you don't have to worry about what you want to do. You just wait to what God shows you what to do. And for me, that's what he did. And it took up to 55 years old before he called me into the ministry. It starts with answering the call of showing up. That's right. And Lord, what do you want me to do? Right. What do you want me to do? You know, and that's where it starts. And we trust the Lord for the development of the rest and the Absolutely. training and the, yeah. all those processes that take place in our lives yeah. that are outside of our hand and our control. Right. And don't give up because I could have given up many times yeah. because, you know, the stress of things and you're trying to do stuff and you don't know and just slow down and, and trust the God and, and do the best wherever he put you at the, for, at, at the beginning. And just keep going. The best thing I say, if somebody's been doing that, and they're trying to figure out where to go, they need to go into the, the, um, the young Bible um, Sunday school side. Children's ministry. Children's yep. ministry. And teach there. I did. And that was one of the best things I ever did in my life. Because of you learn to take God's word and give it to a child, and sometimes you have to do that even to an adult the same way because they don't know God. 
So you, right. you bring it to them as a child, and they understand it more. So you learn, and that's just steps as you go through. When I, when I was getting the call, I was thinking, at this age? So you're never too old. No, you're not. But, that's right. But you do wonder. You know, that's what people need to know. Guys, girls and guys need to know it doesn't matter. Uh -huh. But God's going to pre prepare you. And when you're ready, in his eyes, he will use you to the ends of the earth. Amen. So, yeah. How would you encourage somebody who, who perhaps is saying, you know, I just don't know what my calling is. Right. Uh, I don't know if I'm called to be a pastor, to be a door greeter, to be, to be what? You know, what is the, the calling? How would you encourage them in that? The first thing I'd say is just get into the Word of God first. That's mm -hmm. the first thing you do, and you make it a habit, either in the morning or in the evening or in the noon, whatever you can, get in the Word of God. And then go and volunteer at anything in church. If it is a door greeter, then that's what you do. If it's a parking lot attendant, that's what you do. Um, that's where I started out in California under Raul Reese. I started out as a parking lot attendant. And so it doesn't matter because God uses you And, he, and then he builds you to where it is. So you don't have to worry about what you want to do. You just wait to what God shows you what to do. And for me, that's what he did. And it took up to 55 years old before he called me into the ministry. It starts with answering the call of showing up. That's right. And Lord, what do you want me to do? That's right. What do you want me to do? You know, and that's where it starts. And we trust the Lord for the development of the rest and the Absolutely. training and the all those processes that take place in our lives yeah. that are outside of our hand and our control. Right. And don't give up because I could have given up many times yeah. because, you know, the stress of things and you're trying to do stuff and you don't know and just slow down and, and trust the God and, and do the best wherever he puts you at the, for, at, at the beginning and just keep going. The best thing I say, if somebody's been doing that and they're trying to figure out where to go, they need to go into the... the um, the young Bible um, Sunday school side. Children's ministry. Children's yeah. ministry. And teach there. I did. And that was one of the best things I ever did in my life. Because of you learn to take God's word and give it to a child. And sometimes you have to do that even to an adult the same way. Because they don't know God. So you, right. you bring it to them as a child and they understand it more. So you learn. And that's just steps as you go. I encourage often anybody who wants to be a, a teacher of the word, I tell them, sign up for children's ministry. That's where it starts. If you can communicate the truth of God's word to these little ones. Yeah. Listen, that's a great level. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> They It have is. like a 15-minute yeah, retention yeah. time, and after that you lost them. So you really have to yeah. make it across yeah. and help them understand. Yep. And the, and the process of getting to them yeah. where they can get where they need to be. and. Some adults were there. We were there. Uh, I was was a young, you know, even adult. When I came to the Lord, I needed baby steps. Yeah. You know, I was still fearing. When I came to the Lord, I still feared death because mm -hmm. I didn't know I'm still a new Christian. So my pastor took time with me, explained, you're a believer. Don't fear it. God has you. And that's, that's just those things that you learn by going in and taking baby steps. So. That is right. Yeah. Now, as we should switch gears a little bit okay. uh, how is 2020 today's we're still in 2021 i think i yes, don't know we are, are yeah. we still in 2021 yeah. unfortunately it's it's, <laughs> a, it's been a, an interesting couple of years yes um, how do you see god moving through all of this we were well, dealing with covid we're dealing with uh fear and right all of these things that for the world who who doesn't understand the plan of god is is a very scary situation it is Um, even in, in our church, we had people who was fearful. Um, I got into about five weeks of not having church, mm -hmm. like a lot of people did. And by the end of the sixth week without having church, I just put the memo out, says, hey, we're not doing this no more. We're back in there. If you want to come and see us, you want, we were on, we're on uh, YouTube and that. And yeah. if they want to come out, and, but you want to, I encourage you to be here. If you feel like a mask, wear a mask. If you feel like sitting apart, set apart. Do what you feel that's comfortable. But we need to get back together in God's word. And I says, and I'm not wearing a mask. And so we've been, it was the first weekend of, uh, of May of 2020 
mm-hmm. that we went back to church and we haven't been. Uh, and I thought maybe the health department had come down on us because every other church in town did not come back. Yeah, and we did. We went right back. Yeah. And what was weird is I love people. Mm-hmm. The first week, everybody was scattered all over. They had the mask on. The second week, still scattered all over, no mask. Third week, everybody's hugging on each other. <laughs> we're like, we're back to love. That's right. <laughs> we're back to the and love. And so it has been a good thing. And we not had an outbreak. So I that's think been that's, good. That's about the same timing we've had. I think for about three weeks or so, four weeks, we held, six weeks, my wife says. She's, she's the producing yeah. everything, yep. so she she's knows it right. Yep. Yep. Yeah, she, she knows what she's doing. Uh, <laughs> they do keep us in, in check. Uh, yeah, we need that. Yeah. I, I tell them, I have a forgetful mind. Like, to me, it could be 10 years or two weeks ago. I don't remember. <laughs> and so... It, we were about six week, weeks also close, and we did online stuff. And, and then we're like, you know what, let's just start gathering. What, in the, what are we doing? Right. You know, and, and so I'm a big believer in if the Lord gave you the free choice for salvation, you know, if that is the most important decision of your, or your life you can make, I trust you can make a list choice about whether you want to wear a mask or not, whether exactly. you want to stay close or not, whether you're going to take a vaccine or not. That, that's not that. Exactly. That's not a reason to separate. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like, hey, that's that's if the conviction of the Holy Spirit is upon you, you better obey it. Romans says, if right. it's sin to you, you better not do it. Right. But if it's not sin to me, then yeah. you gotta give me grace. Yeah, yeah. And we gotta meet ourselves in in that the love and the grace of our Lord. Right. And and that's what I it, I think we all have to grapple with with what's going on in the in the culture right now because of COVID. One of the things we look at is, are you a vaxer or are you an anti-vaxer? And you know, to me, I don't care. Yeah. You know why? Because it's between you and God. Mm-hmm. Just like your relationship is between you and God. And so you do what you feel, bring it before the Lord and have a peace about it. And That's then right. do what you think that the Lord wants you to do. And exactly. then go from there. God's going to take care of you. Amen to that. He knows. He knew before we were born, before this world was created, that we were going to go through COVID yeah. at this time. Right now, it wasn't like, oh, Wow, what's happening? He knew it, and he knows every Surprise decision. Again. What's going yeah, on in there? Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, he doesn't. He knew that. So he already knows what he's yeah. going to do with it and who needs to do what they need to do. And, yeah. and, and I think the Holy Spirit, if you ask, will be there Amen. and help you make the right decision for you. And that is the way it needs to be. You yeah. know? And the world is always trying to divide the church. Oh. And sometimes, I hate to say it, the church is foolish enough to divide itself on the de- lines designed by the enemy. We still have churches in, 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 yeah. in Poria, Kansas, that are still shut down because of fear. It's and been see like if, a year, yeah, right? Yeah, and if you, if you do it and you go to the Lord and you, and you let him help you make that decision what you want to do, guess what? There's no more fear. That's right. Because Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is working it out in you. You've working out everything with them, and now there's no more fear. The people who don't do anything, that sit there and they're fearful, they shut down their church and nobody's getting fed. Isn't it sad? It is. It is sad. It is, it is real sad. To what would you tell somebody, as they were talking obviously on the radio and online and so on, what would you tell somebody who, who has just the spirit of fear upon their hearts? You know, believer or unbeliever. I, I think there's two different answers, right. to be honest. Uh, right. But what, let's start with an unbeliever. Well, we, somebody's driving right now or what, come across this video online or whatever, and they just f- have that fear of dying. What, what, what is the answer? Well, for a non-believer, for us to sit down in, in, in an easy way, easy out, if you will, is, hey, I can introduce you to Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. and he can take the fear. But the problem is, is a lot of times... A lot of times, they uh, people don't know how to do that. And in a real quick answer of that is that you need to start trusting in something. And it, it takes the trust first. The trust is what I'm going to tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ, what I'm going to share with you. You have to trust that God is right and true. And then that will bring in the faith. Mm-hmm. And that can change them. And they will get away. Otherwise... As a non-believer, there's nothing I can tell them without using the Word of God that will ever take away their fear because it's only God, it's only Jesus, it's only the Holy Spirit will take away that fear of that man. And without Jesus, you don't have it. So for me as trying to talk to one, I've got to use the Bible. I've got to bring him back to the Word of God. I've got to bring him into the throne room of Jesus 
and Jesus will will help them with that. But if they don't want to believe it or want to be a part of that, there's not much I can do for them. There's there's no hope. There the isn't. eternal hope is only found in Christ. That's right. And so, speaking to somebody directly, let's say his name is John. What do we tell John? A non-believer? Yes. John, you need to get right with God. Because the fear that you're fearing right now and that you're going through, either of death or what's going on in, in the COVID world or what's going to happen around you, that fear is real. And that fear is from an enemy that That's wants right. to take you and kill you. And if you want to get rid of that fear and you want to be rid of that and learn to grow, you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I can show you in the Word of God. I can talk to you about it. I can lead you through it. But you have to make the choice. Right. God gives it not for me to force you. God gives it choice for you. You make that choice, your fears will go away. Now let's talk to a believer. A believer that hears the gospel but never has grasped the power of the gospel. You know what I mean? Because yep. to me it would sound if, if you believe if you have confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, then the greatest thing to deal with is secure. I'm going to heaven. Right. But what would you say to somebody who's been to church and perhaps they feel ashamed that, of that reality that they're afraid right. right now of, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, fear of the future, fear of death, fear of the loved ones, for right. the loved ones, better say. Right. Well, when I came to Emporium, we started a Bible study. It was a collective of people going to other churches, mm -hmm. and they wanted to come and see what was Calvary Chapel about. Well, then, when we started a church, those are the people who went. What I found out, what you're talking about, those people, that's what I had before me. I had people that weren't being taught in churches, that didn't know the Holy Spirit was, was, a, was really a vital uh, part of the Trinity, that they just put the Holy Spirit off the side, that if Jesus Christ was good enough, he is. But the Holy Spirit is what gives us everything that we need. So in that, I'm teaching people and through that you see the fear of people because that's what they carried because they didn't know mm -hmm. so it's the idea that somebody who's like you said that doesn't who's a christian at least give their life to christ but doesn't know the true bible and what the bible teaches then it's real easy you can take them through it and there's many scriptures to start helping them through to understand that they can give that up all the fear all the things that's going on or their loved ones and everything, because it's all in the Word of God. Yeah. And they're not being taught that. It, it, it's the Word. We come it's back the to the Word. You know, yeah. We come back to the reality that uh, my people perish because of lack of... Yeah, because the lack of n not knowing. Not knowing the Word, not right. knowing the love. Uh -huh. That is such a, a reality. You right. know? That is such a reality. And, and if that, that's you here and right now, you say, well... I don't know if I want to go to a different church. I know that we're encouraging you to say to leave the church that you're going to. Please don't misunderstand. We, we believe God, God saves. <laughs> and yeah. it's, a, it's by all by grace. Right. Um, but you say, you know what? I, I feel like there's fear in my heart. I would say, go search in the word. The answer is always found in the word and trust. And if you've never been baptized with the Holy Spirit, you need to do that. Yeah. It's, it's walking with Jesus without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard because our it's, flesh well, doesn't, doesn't possess it. You start, what you do is you start, you start second guessing Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Because the Holy Spirit's not in you and teaching you. And, and, and when, when they teach you, you understand the Bible more. That's it right. gives you the vision of it. It gives you the knowledge of it. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in and really ingrains you in the Word of God. If you're just trying to do it with a walk and with that, and you've ignored the Holy Spirit, you're now second-guessing all the time because you don't have that in you. You need the Holy Spirit. Without it, you're, 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 you're half of where you should be. I call it finding the bottle with one hand tied to your back. Amen. And, and a, few, a few years ago, I told my wife, how about a different situation? But I told my wife, you know, I'm tired of fighting this battle with one hand behind my back. Yeah, it's I don't, time. We don't have to. Yeah, uh-uh. Nobody don't have does. To. No. Real quick, a story real fast. Go for it. Uh, we're here in, in, in Poria, Kansas. We've got started. A lady starts coming. She's in her late 60s. She's coming to the church. Her name was Barb. Unfortunately, we've lost her to cancer. But she was with us for seven, eight years. And so one day we were 
she'd been there a year or so, we had a talk. And she said, you know that I was raised in a church, that I went to church every Sunday, and I went through and thought I was a Christian, and I didn't come to the Lord until I was 48 years old. Wow. Carrying her Bible, going everywhere, going to Bible studies, because nobody ever really explained what it meant to have, a, have Jesus Christ in her heart. And then she says, and, when, and, I, and that was up there in Lincoln, Nebraska, is when she came to the Lord. She was down there, and then she understood what the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was because I was able to teach that. Yeah. So she got completely filled with everything before she passed. But it was the idea that she went years going to church since a child and really never had that full relationship with Jesus Christ. And it was sad to see. I mean, she was happy then, but she yeah, goes, it was, a real, it was a real downer. She goes, I cried for days after I came to the Lord because she thought all those years wasted. But and there's a lot of people like that. Yes. There is. And, and perhaps you, whoever is listening, if you're listening right yeah. now, perhaps you feel that way, saying, you know, I'm not sure I understand the gospel. I heard the stories. You know, I right. heard the... How, did Jesus die for me? But what does that mean? Will you explain exactly. to us the gospel in, in simplicity? The gospel in simplicity. Jesus Christ died for all sins for all men. Mm -hmm. He died for the sins of the past, the, the today, present, and the future. When he died for you and you call out to him, he takes those upon you, takes them away from you, and he places them upon himself and he takes those sins away Amen. and when he does then then he he gets rid of them he doesn't put them in a book for you later he doesn't put a marker name on a box and stuff all your sins in there in case you do something wrong he's going to give them back he dissipates them he, they're gone forever and the, the gospel of that is is jesus christ died for us on the cross And when he died for us on the cross, he paid for all sin. That if we come and turn our life over to him, and we ask him into our lives, and we repent, meaning we've given our sins up, but now we're going to repent from any further sins, and we turn, which repent means 180 turn, That's right. and we walk away, God then blesses us completely, and we are now accepted into the fold. And then after that, We really need to understand who the Holy Spirit is and ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill you up and to hold you fast so you have the ability to really understand what God's Word is so you can live out your life. I think two important things that often get missed is, number one, you don't need to understand everything about the gospel. No. It's not a, this is not a math class. <laughs> no. It's, it's you need to know enough. You need to understand enough that he paid for us on the cross That through his payment, we are welcome yeah. into the Father. But second of all, you don't need to know everything about the Holy Spirit before you ask no. the Lord to no. fill you with his Holy Spirit, right? Right, right. Draw it out. Because when you ask him in, <clears throat> that gives you the ability to, to understand and have the knowledge of the Word of God. You know, there's a lot of people I've talked to. I've read the Bible. It doesn't mean nothing to me. <laughs> well, that's because you don't know Jesus Christ <laughs> that's right. and you don't have the Holy Spirit. And you need Jesus Christ to come into you. You need the Holy Spirit to direct you, to guide you, to implore everything in the Word of God in and into our minds so we can put that out. And that makes us the light that everybody sees. It changes our demeanor. It changes our lives. And the people around us want to see and be what you have because you have something that nobody else does that's right. that they know of. And so that's, that's part of the, the, the whole gospel to me is, is what God does for us. What, through God the Father, through his son Jesus Christ, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on us. And how that just walks with us. And we're there for eternity. I hope that helped. That, that is it. You yeah. know, that is it. Uh, I think people are afraid of the feeling of the Holy Spirit for no reason. A lot of people come from those backgrounds that say, you know what, the Holy Spirit is alive, but at the point of salvation, you receive all that you, you need. You have one field per se, and, and good luck the rest of your life. Right. But we tell somebody who is a believer, you know, who, who has gone to church, has heard the gospel, believes in, for salvation, but has still 
that hesitation. It's, it's like a doubt mm-hmm. that they don't really need what's the Holy Spirit about. And unfortunately, there's not very many denominations or even independent churches that teaches the Holy Spirit. So for when you talk to people like that, they, don't, they have nothing to background to bring into it. So you've got to explain to them more and talk to them that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is by God and designed to do two things. First of all, it fills us up. It gives us everything that we need to learn. But throughout the whole thing, it points us to Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yes, That's what the Holy Spirit's made for. He, he works with the unbeliever, and he taps him on the shoulder, and he points to Jesus. And then when they finally see that, and they, somebody comes along, and then they explain that, and then they come to the Lord. But me now, he still points me. He points me with everything I'm going. He points me right back to Jesus Christ. John and 14. That's what he does. Yeah. yeah, John 14. Yep. He will direct you. He will direct remind us. you. Yep. And he, everything and he I said and done. Yeah. 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 And through that, we learn and we grow. And, and it's just wonderful. It's, it's, it's a joy that you can't imagine. You know, I like talking about joy and happiness. People go, oh, I'm, not, I'm happy where I'm at. Well, not really. Because when I'm walking down the street and I'm happy as I can be, and everybody is, and I stub my toe, my <laughs> happiness is gone. But you know what I still have? I have joy. joy. Yeah. And that joy is what we see that God plants in us when we accept Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Joy forever. Amen. Yep. I don't want to take too much more time. Well, Can you, you tell us how to get a hold of you? I mean, not necessarily. Don't give us your cell phone, please. That's not okay. what I mean. Yeah. You can if you want. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not against yeah. it. Right. But what I mean is, how can we find you online? How can we people go find more about uh, the ministry that you're doing? Um, we have... Um, Boy, you called me out on here. I don't even know the... You don't know the website? I don't know the website. There's Somebody else takes care of that. You can Google uh, it for sure. Yeah, you can put it in there, Calvary Chapel, yeah, Calvary Emporia, Chapel Kansas, Emporia, Kansas, Kansas. And you'll and find it, it. And it'll bring it up. Yeah, if you want to write to us, it's 1130 East 9th uh, Avenue, Emporia, Kansas, 66801. Uh, we would love to we'll answer any questions for you. Um, if you want to leave a way of us contacting you, we will. Uh, but if you want to just look us up, that would be great. And... Um, Uh, we'd love to love to talk to you. I don't care where you're at in the world. Uh, I don't really care where what's going on. If you need somebody to talk to, call me. Amen. Get a hold of me. Are you guys on Facebook? YouTube, yes, we I are. Imagine? Yep, we're on Facebook. I, I imagine the same same response. Yep. Google it. Uh, Google it. Yep. Calvary Chapel, Emporia, Kansas. Yep. Google or yes, YouTube. Yes, please. And I'm please. sure you'll find it. And most likely they have leads on their own website. Yeah. Praise yep. the Lord for... In fact, we people. got a new <laughs> nude web person in there oh, building man. it, making it better, and, and the whole thing. So uh, oh, they've you. taken over everything on that. Your wife's name again? My wife's name is Melody. Melody. Uh, with an I. So she's... Um, uh, in fact, her... Melody with an I, and then she has the mil- uh, the music note over the top of that. Oh, so she, okay. She sounds yeah, that works. That yeah, works. she's a, got a beautiful voice. She's in the uh, the worship really? team, and so yeah. Well, I'm so glad the Lord gave you such a godly wife. Yes, It's such a blessing. I can speak from experience. It's a blessing yes. uh, to have and yes. to keep us accountable, like you said, man, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> will you pray for any listener who may be praying right now and seeking? I, I just need you, Lord. Will you do a prayer for us. Absolutely. Thank you. Go for it. Lord, we, uh, you're an amazing God, and you reach us where we're at. We don't have to get all cleaned up. We don't have to be drug-free. We don't have to be sober-minded. We don't have to be living a big life. You come to where we're at if we just seek you. So if anybody out there right now that needs something better than what they're going through, Either drugs and, and drugs or alcohol or just not living or separation from others or death in the family, and you're really hurting. Uh, Lord, we ask you to touch those right now, those that are listening, and that you would touch them and draw them to you. God, they, they need your help. And, and Lord, I've been there, I know, and I trust that you're in the midst of everybody. Yes, your Holy Spirit is working yes, in everybody right now. We know that times are seen to be short. Craziness has happened around the world. People are fearful, don't know where to turn. But you are the solid rock. Yes. So I ask the Holy Spirit just to fall on people who are listening to hear this. 
have them uh, reach out to you. You will t- contact them. You will bless them. You will yes, listen Lord. to them. And uh, Lord, I just ask you right now just to bless anybody who's out there who's, who's dealing with problems and uh, has things going and have questions. Lord, I just ask you to yes, lead Lord. them to somebody who have, have the answers. And I ask you just to touch those right now that are out there that are really seeking. And God, you would draw them in. Lord, we give us all to you in your holy name. Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. We thank you. We thank you, Father, for allowing our, your son to go and die on the cross for us. We thank you, Jesus Christ, for obeying your, your Father and going to that cross to take on our sins. And you died and you were resurrected. And now you're alive and you stand beside your Father. You sit at the right hand of him. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're working not only in us, but you're working in the, the unbeliever, the person that needs you. And we just ask you just to be with them and to take care of them and surround them. We ask you just to draw them in. In Jesus' name we pray. All the saints say, Amen. Amen. Brad Bowen. 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 I'll get it someday in Kevin. Kevin. I'm going to say right. it right in Kevin. Yep. I'm we'll so glad you made it. This episode is sponsored by KCCN Citizen Radio. You can listen online at kccn.org to an entire station running continually. Also sponsored by Calvary Chapel McAllen. Visit us at ccmcallen.org. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you for having me. May the Lord give ear to all who need to hear his voice today. Amen? Amen. All right, my friend. God bless you. Thank God you again. God bless you. God and bless, let's continue enjoying thank this you. conference. Yep. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Bye.